How's it going, man? It's Howard uh, from Kitty Caster Effects, and in this video, we're going to go over the Groovy Wizard Fuzz Driver, and we're going to unbox it, kind of, and get you started with it. Now, there's only four knobs, so, you know, how hard could it be, right? But we're going to go into it anyway. Maybe you'll get a little bit of insight. But first, we're going to get into setting it up, batteries, power supply, what do you want to do uh, if you're going to Velcro it to your pedal board? And where to put it in your signal chain? And then we're going to wrap the video up with uh, me switching to Les Paul so you can hear what it sounds like with a Les Paul with Super Distortion DiMarzio humbuckers in it. So pretty hot. And I'm going to be able to roll the volume back and get crystal clear even with that. So, because that's what the Groovy Wizard Fuzz Driver does. Anyway, so let's get right into it. All right, so you just got your Groovy Wizard, and here it is. And you're going to open it up. And you get your pedal. Voila, your beautiful pedal. And inside the box, see the lightning bolt with the candy cane there? You lift that up, and underneath, underneath there is your case candy, and there's all kinds of goodies in there. I'm not going to spoil it all for you. But some of what you get is the user guide. And I wrote a bunch of stuff to read about. There's some sample settings and stuff like that. So if you don't want to watch the video, you could probably just do that. But also inside the box, you're going to see two envelopes, a bigger one and a smaller one. What's in there? Glad you asked. In the bigger one, you got your two custom Carbon Zinc Kitty Caster FX batteries, and we're going to install that into the pedal. And then in the smaller envelope, what's in there? Um, they're actually little countersunk screws, and um, that's if you Velcro the pedal to your pedal board. So we're going to get right into that. Okay, here's your fuzz. Let's get in there and change the batteries. So how might we do that? Well, these rubber feet right here, which are great on the stage on the floor uh, for grip and for its stance, you know. Anyway, all you gotta do is twist them off and they got threaded screws right in there. Pretty tricky, huh? So we're gonna take those off right now. And then you just pop the bottom off and there's your pedal. And the main thing we're talking about today is the batteries. So you got the two battery straps right there. So let's go ahead and install this. Um, all you gotta do, and hope you can see this in this video framing here, we're going to clip it in there like that. And then you just tuck it under like that. And then we're going to do the next one. So this is what you end up with. Batteries installed. So now you put the bottom plate back on and you either put the rubber feet back in or if you're going to Velcro this to your pedal board, then what you want to do is, because the feet are going to make it too tall, so that's why we put the screws in here. Instead of using the rubber feet, you take the included screws, and we gave you five, not because there's five holes, but because you might lose one in the carpet and never see it again. And boom, so there you go. Now it's perfectly flat. You can put Velcro on there. If you get tired of that and you want to go back to the feet, you can do that, store your feet in a little envelope, and we're all good to go. So now let's talk about overall power. So we just put two batteries in there because Groovy Wizard runs on 18 volts, but it can actually run from anywhere from like four on up to 18. And you're going to get different tones and responses uh, depending on the voltage. So when you put 
brand new batteries in there, you're getting actually like about 9.5 per battery. So, you know, you're going to get a little 18 plus. And the sound you're going to get is going to be punchy and it's loud. It's going to be more clean, clean headroom, which is what you heard me do with the Strat here, where I can just get it crystal clear by just turning the volume down. Uh, part of that is just 18 root head, 18 watt headroom, 18 watt, 18 volt headroom. And um, if you want to run it with DC power supply, which you can, and it will sound a little different, even with the same voltage as batteries, batteries going to give you a little bit smoother harmonics, a little bit um, smoother attack, a little browner sounding. But DC sounds great too when you plug the DC jack in there. So if you do that, you can go anywhere from 9 to 18. You can use the little voltage reduction thing on your power supply and go down to 4 if you want. And uh, you won't get the dead, bat dying battery type of gated sound necessarily with this pedal. But you will get less output, more saturation, and kind of a, a more compressed sound, which is actually might be what you're going for. Because this is a pretty loud pedal at 18 volts so if you're trying to keep a lid on the volume you could just plug a 9 volt in here and you're good to go you could try 12 volts anything all the way up to 18 and i encourage you to try it because there's a lots of different uh tones and responses based on that and i designed the pedals sort of to take advantage of that the other thing you can do like you Go to your junk drawer and find some old batteries. Like, I don't know, let's see. Okay, here's a couple right here. Just a random couple batteries and they might be too low for running your smoke alarm or your delay pedal or your tuner or whatever. Cause you've got like six volts left or whatever on it. But they will sound great in this pedal. So try that. Take those old batteries you got and plug those in there. And you might like what you're hearing. Okay, so where does this go in the signal chain? Now in today's demo, I'm just going to play one pedal. I will be doing much more videos in the future where I get into um, stacking examples and whatnot. But in general, kind of put it towards the front of your signal chain but you don't have to. Um, wall pedals work great before it. Boosters, envelope filters, maybe compressors, I don't know. Um, probably not so much like chorus or reverbs and delays. Maybe chorus. Phase shifter pedals, definitely I like before it, but like I said, try it after. The main thing to tell you is that um, this doesn't have the problem like a lot of fuzz pedals have with impedance mismatches. So if you plug that wall in front of it, it's going to be a nice, strong sound. And um, I think you're going to like that. So definitely play with that. And um, you might put treble boosters in front of it, get a little bit more out of it if you want. But it's not that picky. And that's the cool thing about this pedal. Uh, that was one of my goals in designing it is to make it not so picky because as you know fuzz pedals can be really particular about where they are in a single chain what guitar you're playing you're using a les paul the fuzz that was like that's not going to work and etc cetera, etc cetera. so i try to solve some of those problems with this and give you a really open dynamic touch sensitive sound um i mean i could uh have the guitar all the way up and it's crunching out there, but watch this. I won't even touch the volume knob. I'll just like play softer. <laughs> Stuff like that. So you didn't have to turn your volume down. You can just get into the nuance of your picking. Or you can just thrash away and have fun and punk out, you know. It does that too. Then you can kind of get on to them with this.
sorry, I'm getting kind of weird, carried away here. Let's get back to the video here. Why don't we? So let's switch to the overhead camera now and let's go through all the knobs and we'll see how they work. All right, boom, here is the groovy wizard. We got volume, we got gain, we got presence, and we got contour. Uh, pretty self-explanatory. The presence is a brightness control that's at the end of the circuit. And the contour control controls how much low end gets into the circuit. So basically low end and high end, volume gain. And let's go ahead and check out what the guitar sounds like. I'm playing a Telecaster straight in. Okay, so now let's hit the pedal. I recommend starting with the knobs at noon. That's where I usually start. And then you kind of go from there. You start adjusting from there. There you go, that's noon. So let's go ahead and play with the gain control, why don't we? So you can get clean at minimum and then you turn the volume up. So quite a bit of boost. There you go, all the way up. So at this setting, it really breathes. You can just barely pick in, or you can slam into it if you want. And let's go back here now. Gain it full there. Let me turn the guitar down and see what happens. So you got a lot of range from clean to uh, full, even with the gain up on the pedal. I'm going to back it off about here. So let's go into the contour control now. So that controls the amount of low end going into the circuit. So it really changes the harmonics and um, how full it is. And it might be subtle if you're playing certain types of uh, picking styles, but if I do kind of a picking thing, like a... Something like that, you can really tell better. So I'm going to turn the contour down to the minimum, and I'll tighten it up. See if you can do a lot of that muted type stuff. Turn that contour down. Turning it full, and it gets full. Kind of tubby for that kind of playing, but great for legato of uh, single note playing. Once again, noon's a great spot to start with. If it's if it's a little bit tubby, then you can just tighten it up a little bit. You're playing single quills, you want a little thicker sound, go ahead and dial it up a little bit. Like that. And then if you want 
like the full fuzz type tone. Trim the gain and the contour of full, and then maximum thickness. And if you use the neck pickup and roll the tone back on your guitar as well, that's how you get that woman tone thing going on. <laughs> Almost fuzz face like. This is not a fuzz face variant, but that gets you kind of close in that ballpark if you want to get that kind of sound. Or you can do this and get it super tight. <laughs> And the contour is also useful for if you're playing the neck pickup and it's too flubby. So let's make it a little bit flubby here. So I'm switching to the neck pickup. I want to tighten it up a little bit. So let's go over here. A little bit more. So you can get that neck pickup nice and speedy sounding, but still got your neck pickup type of sound. All right, so go back to the bridge pickup here. Presence control, another fine tune control like I was saying, so I'm gonna just show you what it does. Right? Smooth, so you wanna smooth out your tone. We want to cut through a little bit more. And then back to the middle, because that's kind of where I end up. And then, like I said, need a little bit of smoothing. I do that. Uh, one note on the presence control, it's a variable frequency um, roll off. So what I mean by that is as you turn the knob, corner frequency changes and it's subtle like I said but the more you get used to the pedal and the more you play it with your rig the more you'll appreciate uh, just having a little bit there you know how it is like oh this sounds great but I just wish it was a little bit smoother all right oh man it's almost there but I need to cut through just a tad so it'll help you compensate for the room you're in, the amp and guitar you're playing, and all those sort of things. Um, yeah, we can do something extreme if you want. Maximum brightness and maximum thinness. Actually, it works pretty well, doesn't it? Turn the gain up a little bit. Gives you a nice fast sound. So let's do the opposite just so you can hear what these range of these controls are. Kind of more legato. And with the volume control, you can slam your amp harder or you can pull it back. Let's go ahead and slam the amp a little bit. So I'm running batteries now. I've got two batteries inside here, running it a little bit over 18 volts because they're fresh batteries. So I've got a nine volt tap here. I'm gonna go ahead and plug that in and show you the difference. So here, play an A chord. Now let's plug in the nine volts. So I'm not sure 
how subtle or not subtle it is in the video, but the playing field changes. It's less punchy, a little bit less clean headroom, but it's also a little bit nicer and saturated too. Okay, let's go back to 18. So it's going to take a minute, not a minute, but a few seconds to equalize whenever you change the voltages. You'll, you might hear the pedal adjusting. Just give it a couple seconds, then it'll adjust to the new voltage. Anyway, back to 18. <laughs> So you kind of hear the attack on the guitar really came through. Um, that's why I call this the fuzz driver, because most classic fuzzes, they kind of have a blunted picking attack, and that's really cool. And I love that kind of thing, especially for single notes. But... I wanted something that sort of preserved the attack or even accented, accentuated the attack on your guitar. But still kind of have the harmonics of a fuzz. That's really about it. Um, hope you got a little bit of insight in this little controlled dive down. I'm sure I'll think of other things to share with you guys in future videos and also Instagram posts. So if you're watching for the first time or getting involved with Kitty Caster Effects for the first time, go to Instagram and follow at Kitty Caster FX. I've been posting clips there of this and the trim driver probably for over a year. Um, didn't do the reveal until early April, but in secret, or at least I wasn't showing you the pedal, I was doing clips for quite a while. So there's quite a library of stuff there, using different guitars, playing different styles and whatnot. So follow at Kittycaster Effects on Instagram or Facebook, Twitter, and uh all the other stuff too, but we're not really doing too much with that quite yet as of this video. But yeah, all right. So I'm going to plug in the Les Paul now and see what's going on with the humbuckers. All right. I will catch you on the camera. <laughs>
Enough noodling on the Les Paul, but you get the picture and get a variety of tones just by how you play and uh, working the knobs and the pickup selector. Uh, yeah, I got the super distortion, Demarzio there, so it's pretty hot, but it still cleans up not too bad. Anyway, this concludes. The YouTube presentation for the Groovy Wizard Fuzz Driver getting started. So you know how it goes. Hit the like button, subscribe, and stay tuned for more videos if you're up for it. I'll be making more um, about the Groovy Wizard, about Trim Driver, together with other pedals, different musical applications, different guitars, different amps all the different angles that I do. So until then, uh, we'll catch you soon. Oh, one more thing. Check out this chord. If I can play it right. That odd sounding chord is a G minor seventh. The third's right here, the minor third. Uh, I figured that out not too long ago, and until then, I was playing it wrong. I was playing it like this. And you're like, what the hell am I going on about? Anyway, hey, you know what? I'll catch you guys later.